In this video, we'll talk about the method we discussed previously and how it can be used to find the volumes of simple geometric objects by using an integral. Like we said in the last video, the point is that if I add up or integrate the areas, I should get something with the, to do with the volume. Let's think about again what this might look like. I want to be able to use cross-sectional area to find the volume of a solid. And if I have a shape that's just a cylinder of a shape moved up and down, the volume here is pretty easy. The volume here should just be the area of the base times the height because that's just that slid upwards. And this works for any base I want, right? It doesn't matter what shape I have for the base. If I can find the area of that base, I know the volume of this cylinder shape will just be the area of the base times the height. It doesn't matter if it's a weird shape like that, it's a circle, it's a triangle base. It doesn't matter what shape it is, it's always the area of the base times the height. But this fact here requires that the area of every single slice be the same as the area of the base, right? We see that here. If I take any slice here in the middle, it'll be the same shape and I'll get the same area. Same shape, same area. Same shape, same area. But what happens if that's not the case? What can I do if the area is not constant at every slice of my object? Well, then we want to think about approximating things and then going down to the integrals that we had before. So if I have an object where the area is not constant at each different slice, right, something like this, where clearly this in the middle here is a smaller area than this up here. Well, how can I try to figure out the volume of this object? Well, the idea goes back to our idea of how we found areas under curves for integrals. Let's chop this into little pieces in the vertical direction. And you keep doing this. If I look at any one of those little slices, I get what's almost a tiny cylinder. And since I'm assuming I'm taking a tiny slice here, I can approximate this by a cylinder that looks something like this, where I just assume that the area of the slices are all the same throughout the entire thing. It's wrong because they're not the constant, but since it's a very small slice, it's close. And so the volume here is approximately the area of this face times my little delta h that I have for my height of this object. And now we can think about adding all of these up to get the total volume of my object. So then I can approximate my total volume by a sum over these n slices, the area at the kth slice times delta h, which we've seen things like this before. As I take delta h to zero, as I get more and more and more slices, this goes to an integral. So the volume should then equal the integral over this object of the area as a function of height, d height. So if that sum on the left approximates the volume of the object, this integral should give me the exact volume of this object. And this is the form we'll be using going forward to find the volumes of these solids given the cross-sectional area. So this is the idea of computing the volume of a solid given that you know it's cross-sectional area at each height. And I mentioned before unit context, I'll mention it real quickly again. This makes sense because the area is a square unit, volume is a cubic unit, and my delta H gives me that last bit of length that I need. So this would be in say meters cubed, this is in meters squared, and this is in meters. So that should give me the unit cancellation that works out. And we visualize it the same way in the integral, where this again would be in meters cubed, this is an area will be meters squared, and this dh carries a unit of meters with it because it is a length unit, it has a, a meters attached to it. So this gives us that this formula should be the right idea for figuring out what the volume of this solid looks like. So let's do an example and see how this works. Find the volume of a pyramid with square base of height five meters and base length six meters. So you probably know a formula for this already, but we will get to the answer at the end and then check with the formula that we have from basic geometry for how you find this volume. So let's draw a picture, and there's our pyramid. So if I want to find this volume using an integral, what am I gonna need? Well, I'm gonna need the area at every height. So let's take a slice here, and I wanna find the area of that face given that it's at height h. Now to figure this out, I'm gonna take a slice of this pyramid right through the vertex and down through the middle of the base. So I'm gonna take a plane that goes like this, and I'm going to cut that slice out of the pyramid and look at it. And that slice looks something like this. Now, if we are at height h, we know this is h. We know that our pyramid has a square base. The side length is 6 meters, which means this is 3 and this is 3. And we know that our height is 5. 
which tells me this here is 5 minus h. Now, if I want to find the area of that green square, I need its side length. Well, this here is going to be s over 2 for the square, and I can now use similar triangles to figure out what that number has to be. So similar triangles tells me that 3 over 5 equals s over 2 over 5 minus h. I then want s in terms of h because my integral is going to be a dh integral, so I need s in terms of h to figure this out. So I cross multiply, and I get that formula right there, 6 minus 6 over 5 h, that is s. Now if I want to find this volume, I have to integrate the area as a function of h times dh. And what should my bounds of this integral be? Well, it should start at 0 because that's where I'm starting my height calculation, and it should go up to the height of this pyramid, which is 5. Now, what is the area of that square? Well, it's going to be s squared. But since that's s, I can just put in that squared into my equation. Integral 0 to 5 of 6 minus 6 over 5h squared dh. I expand out the perfect square to get that. I can then integrate the expression to find the antiderivative. So I then want to evaluate at 0 and 5. At 0, I get 0. And if I plug in 5, this all comes out to 60 which is great because if you have your formula from geometry, it's one-third base times height. That'll come out to 60 as well. So for these problems, the trick really comes down to how are you going to find the area as a function of height? And what do you have to do to get that area? In this case, it's similar triangles, and a lot of problems will be something like similar triangles or figuring out the radius of a circle in order to find the area as a function of height that you can then integrate to get the total volume of this object.